Hi ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams again. I want to talk to you about confidence intervals, estimation, and point estimates for a minute. What I'm going to use to do it is this basket full of bulldog puppies. Because sometimes, like puppies, we can't take and examine every bulldog puppy in the world. So that population is too big. So what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sample of puppies, which are my puppies in the basket, and I'm going to use these little guys right here to draw some conclusions and make some sweeping statements about the characteristics and attributes of all bulldog puppies in the world. So what is the point estimate? The point estimate is simply a single value, just like this one single puppy, that is derived from the sample used to estimate the population value. So all this little guy is, is the sample mean. So what I did was I took all my puppies in my basket and I weighed them. And I came up with the average weight of them, and that is this little guy right here. And he is simply the single value estimate of the weight of every puppy in the universe. Well, that's a little bit of a bold statement to say that my small sample is representative of the entire population. In other words, I'm saying my basket of puppies was so well drawn as a sample that I could calculate the sample mean and this one little guy right here becomes the poster child representative of the average weight of every puppy in the entire universe. What's more realistic is to say that the average of my sample can be used to create a range, an interval, a spread within which the true average weight of all puppies probably falls. In other words, I'm not going to use a single value or a single point to represent the true average weight of all these puppies. I'm going to use a range or an interval of values within which I believe the true population mean will fall. How confident or how sure I am that I've actually captured the average weight of every puppy in the world is simply my confidence interval. That's the 99% certain, 95% certain, 90% certain because I'm a lot better off giving you a range of values than I am putting all my faith in this little guy regardless of how cute he may be. So when I move and swap over to creating a confidence interval, what I do is I take my point estimate, remember my one little guy, and I make him the mean of my distribution. And when I make him the mean of the distribution, I'm then able to construct confidence intervals that are based on this guy, who is my point estimate and my sample mean. And instead of saying, hey, the population mean is exactly right here, instead, when I go to my go to my confidence intervals, I say, based on his weight, I am a given percent, 99 percent, 96 percent certain that the average weight of every bulldog puppy in the world falls somewhere in this range in this confidence interval. So basically what I'm doing is instead of using 
this little cute guy as the absolute value of the population mean. I'm using him as the basis for constructing a confidence interval within which I am fairly certain the true average weight of every puppy in the world falls. How I determine the values that are at the end, top and bottom of my interval, how I determine that is with my confidence interval, which is basically my 95, 99, 96, 86 percent probability. And remember, in order to do that, we fall backwards, we fall back to our normal curve and the scale of Z. So, hopefully this makes the whole concept of point estimates and confidence intervals make a little bit more sense. I'm going to work some problems in another video, but until then, this is the end. See you guys soon.